Now we've seen that as we move along our curve, we actually have a frame of three unit vectors that move along with that curve. We have the unit tangent t that points tangent to the curve. We have the unit normal n, which is in the direction that we're turning. And then we take t cross n and get a third vector, the binormal, the unit binormal b, which is perpendicular to those two. So we have these vectors moving along. Um, we also have a set of three planes moving along. We have a plane that contains t and n, a plane that contains n and b, and a plane that contains t and b. And we give names to these planes. Um, Let's see, we'll explain how those names, what those names are and how they come about. So first, the plane containing n and b, if you think about that plane, the curve, its normal is, the plane's normal is the unit tangent, right? Which means that if you looked at that plane that contains n and b, the curve is breaking through is breaking through that plane normally, right? Perpendicular. So the, the unit tangent is perpendicular to that plane, and so the curve as it as it passes through that plane is going through it perpendicularly. Therefore we call this the normal plane. Normal because the curve is actually normal to it. So this is the the normal plane. Now the plane containing T and N n is the direction that we're turning in. So we have this plane that contains t and n. There's t, and here's n, the direction that we're turning in. And they create this plane. This is actually the plane that the osculating circle would lie in. So it would contain that osculating circle. Now the distance to the center would be equal to rho, and the location of the center would be a distance, in the, it would be in the direction of n. So you'd start at this, at this point on the curve, and then you'd go, um, you'd go a distance rho in the direction of n. So, <clears throat> so the center of the osculating circle would be a distance rho n from, from that point on the curve. Since this, this, um, this one, the, the, for this plane, the normal is b, right? So this plane's normal is b, and uh, it contains that osculating circle, so we call it the osculating plane. OK, and um, the third plane is the one that contains t and b. So we look at this third plane, the plane containing t and b. It's normal is the unit normal n. So what's perpendicular to that plane is the unit normal n. So we have this plane here, right? and the unit normal n is perpendicular to that plane. This plane is, we call this the rectifying plane. So now how do you rectify something? Rectifying. Okay, so we have these three planes. The normal plane, the, pla the curve breaks through it perpendicularly, so it's the plane that the curve is normal to. It's normal is actually the unit tangent. That can be a little confusing because we have a unit normal, right? Um, the, one, the one whose normal is the unit normal, that's the one that contains t and b. It's the rectifying plane. And the one that contains t and n is the one that contains the osculating circle, and so it's the osculating plane. Let's do an example. We'll find the equations of the normal, osculating, and rectifying planes um, to this curve. Now, those planes are different depending on the location, so we'd have to find them at a particular time. So we'll find them at time t equals pi halves. Now, we've already um, calculated t, n, and b for this curve, so we just need to evaluate those at, um, at t equals pi halves. So if we evaluate that at t equals pi halves, what will we get? The cosine of pi halves is 0, so we'll get 0. The sine of pi halves is 1, so negative 3 fifths 
and four fifths. Okay, if we figure out what the normal vector is at this particular time, see we'll plug in t equals pi halves, evaluate this at t equals pi halves. Now we get negative one, zero, and zero. So there's our unit normal at that particular time. And at time pi halves, our unit binormal. Let's see, again the cosine of pi halves is zero, so we get zero. Um, negative four-fifths and negative three-fifths. So this is what our t, n, and b are at this particular time. Now, so we've got for each of the for each of the planes, we've got a normal to the plane. The other thing that we need is a point on the plane. Well, the curve lies in all three planes, so in each case we can use our location at that particular time to figure that out. Let's see, our location would be 3. The cosine of pi halves is 0, so 3, 0. And uh, 4 times pi halves would be 2 pi for our location. OK, so let's find the normal plane. OK, the normal plane, it <clears throat> the normal plane's normal is the unit tangent t, right? So we know that. For any point on the plane, if we take the unit tangent, which is 0, negative 3 fifths, and 4 fifths, if we take the unit tangent and dot it with a vector from our, our one point on the plane to any other location, x, y, z on the plane, y minus 0, z minus 2 pi, we know that that's going to have to give us, um, that dot product is going to have to be 0 because this is, the unit tangent is normal to the normal plane. And um, this is any vector that, that lies, in the, lies in that normal plane. And so the dot product has to be 0 there. So we end up with negative 3 fifths um, y. And that's supposed to be 4 fifths plus 4 fifths z minus 8 fifths pi equals 0. So there's the equation of our normal plane. Okay, now let's go on to the osculating plane. So the osculating plane's normal. The osculating plane contains t and n, so its normal is b. So b we have 0, negative 4 fifths, negative 3 fifths, dotted with Again, x minus 3, y, and z minus 2 pi has to equal 0. So we get negative 4 fifths y minus 3 fifths z plus 6 fifths pi equals 0. There's the equation for the osculating plane. All right, and finally, we want the rectifying plane. So the rectifying plane, its normal is uh, n, because the rectifying plane contains t and b. OK, so um, let's see. Then its normal is n, which is negative 1, 0, 0. And we dot that with um, the vector from our center point or our point on the curve uh, 3, 0, 2 pi to any other point on that plane. That dot product has to be 0. So we get uh, negative x plus 3 equals 0 as the equation of our, um, of our rectifying plane in this case. So I went ahead and used maple to plot um, the curve and those um, those planes. So here I have my my p1 is. We can zoom in here a little bit. Um, my p1 is the helix, right? I'm using the space curve command here, and then I parameterized each plane. So I got a parameterization for um, the normal plane, the osculating plane, and the res and the uh, rectifying plane. And um, then I display them together. So the first thing I did was to display the curve with the normal plane. 
you can see there's the there's the normal plane right see the curve breaking through that normal plane perpendicularly so okay the next came the osculating plane if you look at it the curve is actually turning in that osculating plane so the the turning is actually happening in the osculating plane and finally that third plane the rectifying plane right so this is the plane that is um, that's sort of perpendicular to the direction of motion and to the direction that we're turning. So, well, no, let's see. It's perpendicular to n, yeah, so it's perpendicular to the direction that we're turning. So I put them all three together, and you kind of have this, this set of three planes. You can see at each location, there's a set of three planes that are, um, that, that are kind of moving along with the curve. One of them is the one of them the curve breaks through normally. The other plane um, is the osculating plane that the, that the curve is turning in, and then the the final plane is that rectifying plane whose normal is n.